um, playing for a national championship. So crazy, crazy. Is that Jason? We got Jason on the All right, let's go to Jason. Hey, Jason, you're on the line. How are you? Good morning. Awesome to have you on. I, I appreciate you taking the time this morning. No, I appreciate you having me, man. It's always a pleasure talking. Awesome. Oh, people that want to talk to me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. So, listen, Jason, we were talking, um, obviously, a great career, a 20-year career in the major leagues, and uh, we'll, we'll get into some of that. But, you know, played right here in Baldensville. And, and there's been a lot of local athletes that have that have played in the major leagues and um, you know, some of the ones locally that we know, Arky Sinfrakos from right here in Rome, and Mark Lemke had a great career, Andy Van Slyke and yourself. How special was it, to, you know, to play for a local um, team, Baldwinsville, in the air? I know you're a Michigan guy, but to go all the way from, from Baldwinsville to the big leagues, how special is that? Well, you know, I know uh, there are some, some athletes and more uh, that have risen out from out of there, so, um, you know, I can't say it was a disadvantage. I think it's just what I keep expressing to people is that, you know, you got to work hard. you got to put in your time. Uh, there's no excuses. You sometimes have to work harder. I mean, I, I don't even have the tools that some of my own uh, sons and his friends have nowadays with all the facilities that are opening and, and um, the tools that you can use. I remember just using a blanket and setting up a little stations down in my basement in, in upstate New York. So, you know, I ate, drank, and sleep, left it, and... Um, uh, you know, didn't didn't hurt having a father who was uh, also an ex big leaguer to help me along the way. But um, you know, I'm definitely proud of where I came from. Definitely, uh, you know, love that I can. Uh, a lot of people have thanked me for inspiring them that they can make it too. I said, yeah, you just got to work hard. Sometimes harder. Uh, you have to look up on the horizon. So, kind of what I'm doing now uh, with a company I partnered with in, in Syracuse, Top 100 Sports. They're based right here. We're, we're, our headquarters are right in Syracuse, New York. And I'm trying to show these amateur athletes like what I learned at basically at 23, very late in my career, is at the beginning of my career. Um, you know, and during the era that I had to come up with, com- combating guys that were steroid users in the game, and that was very prominent and prevalent. So uh, right. the weight room, the weight room warrior, was something I had to learn. And I hired a personal trainer who's a real dear friend of mine. Um, down in Orlando, I knew nothing about it. I was always intimidated by it. I, I was always taught that it was uh, something you shy away from, especially as a pitcher. Um, but you know, as as the game has evolved and bigger, faster, stronger, it was something I had to incorporate into just functional movement and then strength training. So that's kind of what I'm just teaching kids now and and um, passing the baton because it's no longer about me. Um, I think the close the closing to my career was being inducted in the Syracuse Hall of Fame, so time to pass the baton on. And, and Jason, how inspirational was it in, in a help of, your, you know, your dad pitched in the big leagues as well, but having a dad that was, you know, who went through it, um, how much did that help you during your career? Well, I can't, like I said, it's an advantage from just being able to talk similarities. I know he's always said, he goes, you far surpassed what I've done in my career, but uh, my dad's career was nothing to scoff at. He played 11 years professionally and had to have been pretty good to, to get about two, three years in the big league. So, um, you know, just just knowing the ropes, I know the game always changes. I mean, now if I went back as a 44-year-old, the, 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 the game has definitely evolved and changed. And I feel like I borrowed it at a, at a great time for me when the, the brand of baseball was a lot different. Um, but yeah, having an advantage of a dad who taught me to love and respect the game was what I now preach and teach myself, you know. So um, that won't change for me. I think it's just you you take what you you uh, have learned, and I'm continually learning because I have to adapt now to my sons who want to borrow and, and you know pursue it and, and keep the uniform on as long as they they want and can. So I'm here for them. I'm here for their the kids around me. Their their whether it be their their peers, their friends, uh, teammates, uh, kids I don't know. They've even tried to share. You know, people know I don't want to go to a little league park around here in Pittsburgh. But it, it's not about withholding and keeping that information. It's I love and respect the game, and I love watching good brand baseball. So I'm trying to change that. Again, you know, throw out the top 100 sports plug. That's, that's who I'm with. Uh, people should check us out and what we're doing because – it's all about getting the, the development the right way and developing athletes, um, teaching them the right way because uh, I think a lot of people 
are focused on just throwing the ball or hitting the ball farther, throwing the ball harder. Um, there's a lot more brand of the game that I think is, is lost, and I hope that I can slowly help bring it back to where it should be, you know, uh, and how it should be played. And, Jason, you were originally drafted in 94 uh, by the Yankees, but you had opted out to go play college baseball at Seton Hall, and then you later went on um, to, to be drafted by, by San Francisco. I think it was in 97. Um, I, I know as, as a young athlete, you know, everybody, if you, you have a chance to get drafted right out of high school, and, you know, you made a tough decision to go to pl- go play college baseball. Some some kids nowadays wouldn't have made that decision. They would have said, well, geez, I can go play in the big leagues right away. What factored in for you? What what changed from, you know, coming out of high school to, you know, going to play college baseball? Um, well, I told my dad, you know, we were talking around possibilities with, with negotiations, uh, by the Yankees, they didn't waste a higher round pick on me. It was you know, it was considered a projection pick because you know they wanted to know what my signability was, and my father had some conversations with with them um, more about feeling me out. And I said, Dad, I said if I'm on the map now, I told him my goal was to be a first round pick and play Division One baseball. I wanted to have that college experience. I think a little bit of what would help my decision. Two things was that '94 there was a there was a strike in baseball. I was only 17 years old. Um, and I was a skinny, skinny guy back <laughs> in the day. So, like I said, having a little bit of uh, confidence and, uh, you know, just, just projecting myself to where I fit in, um, I didn't uh, really felt like I was going to fit in the scene of just traveling on, on buses and maybe uh, playing with guys that were old enough to go drink and whatever. I felt like that I wasn't mature enough or ready enough that way, and college was kind of that buffer zone. And that's actually the offer that came in. Uh, was pretty equal. My college scholarship versus what the Yankees offered me, and granted, like I said, who doesn't want to be a Yankee? I think everybody does at some point for many reasons. But uh, I was I was tickled that um, you know that that organization saw me as, how they did, and 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 you know, decided to even still pick me even though I was leaning towards college. So that was the factor, and like I said, it proved uh, to be the right decision and and the belief in myself that I could I could better myself to be ready. Um, for the road ahead. And how special was it? I think it was in 2000 when you made your major league debut. What was going through your head, you know, the first time you you stepped foot on the mound? Um, you know, did you say at one point, did you th- say to yourself, I finally got here? That You know, the journey's long. I always say I think baseball is the toughest sport to make it to the big leagues out of all the professional sports, and a lot of people argue with me. But what went through your mind when you stepped on the mound for the first time in the big leagues? Well, the nerves were amazingly. I remember this, that flight seemed so long, and, and uh, it was it was a painstaking flight in the sense that I had to go from Calgary, Canada, all the way to Miami. I don't know why they even would even want a you know Triple A team that far away. So I had to cross the border, cutting through Calgary to Dallas, Dallas to Miami. I didn't sleep the whole time, and I I, I don't remember eating anything or drinking anything. My nerves were so high, and I just I was facing the Atlanta Braves who you know they're they're running that time of all the people that were on that lineup and on that team um so yeah it was just definitely like I, I kept mental my mental preparation was was pretty intense and um you know as well as just saying hey no matter what happens you know this this won't be the last stop but I, I was just like I'm not losing this game that's all I kept telling is that you're not going to you're going to fare well and you're not going to lose this game this is what you hoped for. This is what you dreamed about. This is what you worked for. And I didn't want to disappoint in front of my my family, which I had a lot of big uh, big group there. And I even got the game winning hit. So <laughs> I uh, I uh, I made I made the most of it. That's for sure. And your time in Detroit, I, I know you you spent some time with, with a lot of different teams, but your time in Detroit, you know, you got a chance to play in a World Series. And unfortunately, I think it was the one against St. Louis, where I think you guys unfortunately lost. But what was it like to play for Jim Leland? Um, it was it was a pleasure, and it was definitely intimidating. Uh, the guy, you know, you respect him, and he's had success. One of the probably the premier managers in the league at the time and longstanding. But um, you know, to play on that team, it was it was tough pitching for him as a middle reliever because he definitely used me quite a bit. But I think you know I'm thankful for um, just just that stepping stone. Uh, my time in Detroit was was good and it was tough. You know, being in the World Series team and albeit losing, I'd rather say that I, I've been to a World Series and lost, but to never have gone. 
I do have a second place ring that looks like a, this doesn't say World Series champions on it, right. but uh, you know, I know that that those years in Detroit and being booed by the Detroit Tiger fan, uh, booed out of Detroit essentially, uh, made me fit to be a closer. I, you know, I've, I have such an appreciation. I've done everything from the front, the middle, to the back of the bullpen, and every every way you could be used as a pitcher on a big league staff. And the middle relievers now have such a higher value. Um, than they used to because, you know, if people look at your ERAs and all the stats are on the back of the card, I said, but what they don't see is your inherited runners and inherited runners scored. Right. And that was something that I focused on primarily of what I did. And I was doing it at a clip, I think, of like 72 or 75%, which is was tops of the league at the time. And so when I got traded to the Rockies, and my, my introductory meeting on two hours sleep, uh, with Clint Hurdle, I showed up when we were playing the Dodgers in Colorado. I was so excited to be out of Detroit and get a fresh start after being booed out of town. Um, you know, it was just one of those things and, and had the introductory meeting. How's everything? Are you okay? You need anything? Family good? All the formalities that you hear when you meet the manager, your skipper. And uh, he, he asked me a pretty loaded question running out to the outfield. I want to just kind of hang and get the Denver air under, in, in my lungs, get used to that and meet some of my teammates. He said, what do you want out of your career? I said, are you serious? And uh, that was a turning point in my career. I said, well, I said, given that you're asking that question, I've been waiting for somebody to ask me. And uh, I know I can pitch in the back of a bullpen. I said, but a lot of waves have to part and contract and experience. I said, I just hope one day I'll get that. Fast forward to, you know, Pittsburgh when we rejoined each other. And they, Pittsburgh was on the rise in 2011. I got, I opted out of my contract. You know, it says that on my transaction sheet, the Phillies let me go, but I actually let them go because I had it out in my contract. And I called Clint Hurdle amongst other people, and I said, hey, Clint, I said, you guys are doing great. I know I pitched well for you back in Colorado. I said, if there's a chance you need me, um, I'm taking my out with the Phillies. Um, so if you want me, come get me. And so he sent, uh, he and the Pittsburgh Pirates staff sent some scouts, Mark Del Piano, who's a hometown yes, guy. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, he came to see me in Syracuse. I did my thing. I struck two guys out like I was doing all summer long with the, with the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. And, um, you know, the next thing was in Pittsburgh and the rest is kind of history. But, you know, had it not been for my, you know, I think everybody looks at your successes, but they don't see all the trials and tribulations that formulate you. And, you know, I'm just glad that my mental toughness uh, my fortitude, that, that's what I, you know, prided myself in. And sometimes I look back and I go, God, I was such an intense, you know, time period. And, and now in retirement, it just, you know, you get to look back and just enjoy and breathe and really enjoy my, my, uh, my career. And we're talking to former Major League Baseball player Jason Grilly pitched right here and played at Baldwinsville High School. Um, Jason, you're talking about your career in Pittsburgh, and I know that I think it was your 2013 year. You ended up uh, pitching in the National League All Star game, and uh, I, I, I believe I got to quote me on this if I'm right or wrong. I think you gave off a leadoff triple to Prince Fielder, but then you struck the side out, right? Did you strike the side out? Or did you just retire the side? No, I retired the side. Uh, it was definitely something, and it you know it brought back a, a big memory. And this is, I said, you draw on your past experience, as I just said before. And my first big league uh, outing was was as a professional was in Hawaii. The San Francisco Giants sent me out to the Hawaiian League when that was still going on. And I gave off a leadoff triple, and I said, this guy's not scoring in my first big league inning. So I just rewound back to then. I didn't care how I got guys out. I just was like, he's not scoring. but uh, And he didn't. So I just prided myself on that. And, um, you know, it was just a, it was an all-around amazing experience. It was definitely an honor. Uh, I wish I got to do that more in my career. Um and having Mariano tip his cap to me, we were warming up at the same time. I got to speak to him before the game. It was just all around that whole that whole weekend. I was sharing with my family the red carpet, the you know the, the All Star uh, home run derby. Having my kids, uh, it's one of my favorite pictures because I always had dreamed that uh, my sons would would be on my lap and and just sharing, you know, just the victory of baseball and being amongst the, the greats uh, of, of of my time period. So. Um, definitely a great honor, and we had five guys from our team that year go to the All Star Game. So it was just a great, probably one of the greatest uh, times and experiences. Besides being a Toronto Blue Jay, which was also my my other favorite team to play for, because that was my childhood team growing up, and I'm still a big fan of the Blue Jays. I'm hoping big things for them. So uh, yeah, just you know, being an All Star and 
seeing what guys like you know Corbin are doing and just Central New York. We're trying to produce more more guys. I think we're on the map for inspiring some kids in the snow belt up there. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you know, I know you, you got a chance to, to pitch in the World Series, but how special was it though to pitch in the World Baseball Classic for Team Italy? I think that's awesome. Yeah, I just actually found a tape uh, from Tommy Lasorda, and I'm trying to have it remastered here because. You know, now with his passing, I think a lot of people. Uh, I'm hoping that I can share it with the with the world here. Uh, I got to play for Team Italia for three years. Um, now being, albeit because I was a citizen of Italy, I'm a citizen of Italy. Um, but Tommy Lasorda, I just found this cassette tape, and I had to buy uh, a, a cassette player and converter for Amazon off of Amazon. And um, you know, I have a buddy of mine over in Italy. He says he can remaster it so he can take out some of the graininess of a an old cassette player, right? <laughs> um, but he, he gathered us for the inaugural uh, game against in 2006 when we were at Wild World of Sports in Disney. And, um, you know, he said the, team, the, the name on the front you know, was able to be played for because of the name on the back. It was just a cool honor. And he had guys in the shower. We were in this small uh, shower in one of the clubhouses and uh, locker rooms in, in Disney. And so he gathered us in there, and it was just a very cool moment. So I've had some amazing experiences. Again, I'm reliving them all, uh, playing for Team Italy three times at the World Baseball Classic. I think it's coming up again here soon, so it'll be always fun. To, it's a fun kickoff to watch how intense that is. It's like playoff baseball in spring training. That's why some of the GMs don't like it because you're kind of playing at a high intensity sure. right at the beginning of the season. But, you know, these guys, if you don't train for it and you're not ready for it, you know, I think you just got to be smart about it to jump the gun that way. But I, I had so much fun playing there, and um, yeah, definitely, definitely another another great memory to add to the to the run I've had. And then you, you know, the last thing I wanted to ask is you, you mentioned the uh, you know your career, the 2019. You were inducted into the Greater Syracuse Sports Hall of Fame. Special moment. Um, I know you went in with a, with a with a good class, but how special was that to to be inducted right here locally in Syracuse? Well, like amazingly so. You know, I have to say, uh, my father's career ended in Syracuse, and we were raised there primarily in a great area to grow up in. I have fond memories of upstate New York, and I'm hopeful that my father follows suit. I think, you know, my dad being a fixture in that area, being a little bit of an ambassador to Syracuse, and all the kids that he's tutored, including myself, uh, being one of them, um, I definitely wear that honor. And, and even though he's not in that, in that category yet with me I, I hope that he will be and deserving me so not just because he's my dad because of what he's done in that area but uh, yeah definitely an honor a great class to go in with and it was kind of like I said a good way to phase out um, and, and encapsulate just fond memories of my career being over so it was kind of a little little party uh, to honor my career and, I, and I'm very very humbled to be in with good company. And Jason, a fun question for it because you were born in the state of Michigan. Are you a are you a Michigan football or Michigan State fan? No, I grew up an Orangeman fan. How could I not? Oh, that's right. nice. that's that's good. We like. Yeah, it. I was too young. I was too young. I was only you know, uh, I was born there, but my dad's career, like I told you, primarily raised in Syracuse. So I'm always an Orangeman fan through and through. Even here in Pittsburgh, people don't like to see my my SU colors come out. <laughs> No, that's great. Well, listen, Jason, you're a great story, and it just shows you, you know, no matter what size school you go to, if you're good enough, you put in the time and the hard work, uh, you you can accomplish anything. Great story. I hope we can have you on again. It was a pleasure chatting with you, and uh, we'll definitely we'll, we'll, we'll promote um, promote you more on our page, too. I appreciate it. No, definitely. And like I said, if kids weren't trying to follow suit with myself and the Corbins of the world and all the people that are coming out of Syracuse, New York, they need to check out Top 100 Sports. I'm a partner and affiliate of that, and uh, you know, get these kids trained the right way because it takes a lot to be uh, keep the uniform on as long as you can, and that's my goal. Is whether it's you know high school teams, collegiately or professionally, I just want to teach kids what it takes because it, it, it's requirement. It's it's a lifestyle. It's not just something you do by chance. So check out Top 100 Sports, and hopefully we'll see you come through the system. Absolutely. Well, Jason, listen, thanks for the time, my friend. I hope we chat again soon. I appreciate it, guys. My pleasure. You got it. Thank, Thank you. Jason. All right, we're going to send you the news more from the Mohawk Valley Sports Watch. 
witnesses in the Trump impeachment trial. It would appear that Democrats who are seeking to have the witnesses called are going to win the day. Four GOP senators have voted in favor of that motion as well. The second impeachment trial of the former president yesterday featured a lot of video clips by Democrat lawmakers using words like fight in their own political speeches, and the Trump defense team says that proves that the president's own speech along those lines did not incite a riot on Capitol Hill. Lawyers for the president arguing his impeachment trial, in fact, is no more than a campaign of what they call hatred against...